Hi, I'm George Thurabonthagal, and I am from the <coughs> uh, Loyola University Emerging Technologies Laboratory in the Department of Computer Science, and I am also involved with Computing Now. And I would like to begin by um, showing a demonstration of what can be done with the CUDA Toolkit from NVIDIA. The, t the CUDA Toolkit basically allows you to turn your own laptop or desktop into a supercomputer of sorts. So for this demo, I'm actually going to be using my Mac. I've also built my own computer um, from this company called uh, Shuttle, which I use for GPU programming at home. And I hope to show you this in another video. Um, so basically, if you want to get started, you need to download and install the CUDA Toolkit version 3.2. This is the latest toolkit from NVIDIA which basically allows you to program your GPU on just about any platform. <clears throat> so if you take a look, you'll see um, on this page, CUDA Toolkit 3.2, that we have quick download links for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And I've already installed, of course, these uh, tools on various computers, and I believe that the installation is fairly straightforward for anyone who would like to try this at home. Just to scroll down a bit, you can see that there are distributions for every platform. Notably, um, there are 32 and 64-bit builds for you know, Windows especially. <coughs> and the same is also true for Linux. Um, for Mac, there's an all-in-one installer that allows you to run on both 32 and 64-bit platforms. As you can see, um, for most of the platforms, it's fairly straightforward. You begin by downloading this developer driver, and then what you'll do is you'll set up the CUDA toolkit. And the most important thing is actually to make sure you download the SDK code samples, uh, which shows a number of different things that can be done with the CUDA toolkit. And I think you'll be delighted that when you see some of the uh, opportunities that exist for adding acceleration to your application. I'm going to basically show you some of the demos um, just so you can get an idea of what this is about. And um, when you <clears throat> when you actually uh, download the um, GPU examples, you're given the option to save the examples to uh, a, a folder on your computer. And what I've done actually is I've taken these examples and put them in a little directory called the GPU directory. And the basic layout of this is fairly simple. Um, we're going to take a look mainly at the C examples that use the um, NVIDIA programming interfaces directly. Um, the, that is the CUDA interfaces. So there's a directory which contains the C source code. And the, the way this is laid out is very typical if you've come from the Unix or Linux world. Um, there is also a, just for your convenience, there is a HTML file here which allows you to actually browse all of the samples. However, you're going to find that it's much more convenient to learn to work at the command line, which is still very much how most development is done on this platform. So just to take a look, we're going to start by looking at the um, the actual compiled executables. And one of the advantages of the way that um, NVIDIA has organized the code is that they've actually made it possible for you to run the examples without knowing how to compile them. And I'm actually going to start from there. And in a future um, installment, I may actually show you a little bit more about how to do work with the NVIDIA SDK. So let's take a quick look here. You'll see that you have to drill into the folder structure to actually find what's called the release build. This is um, a convention that actually is used on a number of platforms now, um, including especially on Windows, where there are usually release and debug profiles. We're going to look at the release code so that we don't have any debugging information that could potentially affect the performance of the program. So if you look in here, there's just a lot of stuff, and this is why it actually may pay to look at the um, HTML file. But we're going to actually just take a look here at uh, the bandwidth test, 
just so you can get an idea here, okay, excuse me. Um, so if you run the bandwidth test, this will actually use your GPU. Okay, and I want to um, say a couple of things about the output that's shown here because this could actually be very helpful if you are trying to understand just how good the performance of your graphics card is. So on the on the MacBooks, the, the graphics card is, is pretty zippy, but um, compared to some of the you know, PCI Express cards that you now find in typical PCs, um, the bandwidth is maybe kind of limited, about one-tenth of the throughput. So on this device, anyway, you can see that we're getting around, you know, 515.6 you know, megabytes per second. Just to give you an idea of how this compares to some dedicated um, desktop workstations, um, my my other computer, you know, generates a value about one order of magnitude faster than this. So it gives you an idea of just how fast the host can communicate with the device when you have a, a very high-speed bus on your uh, computer. And so this just gives you a little bit of an idea. One thing that's kind of neat about the um, NVIDIA programming interface, and it's not shown here, but is something to keep in mind. If you had happened to have multiple uh, graphics cards or GPUs in your computer, it will actually show you um, the... Okay, hang on a second here. Yeah, it will show you uh, which device has actually been selected. And so the, the, there is a programmatic way of saying, give me the fastest graphics card that's available on my computer. Unfortunately, on most laptops, there's only one such device, if you're lucky. One of the you know many beautiful demos that exist on, um, on, in the NVIDIA SDK, and one of my favorites is an example, oops, this is a compiled executable program here, not a directory. Um, one of my favorite examples is the nBody um, example, which, um, as we all know, is, is uh, part of the, well, we don't all know this, but we know that the nBody program is basically um, a way of modeling the universe, if you will, um, where basically you try to identify all of the bodies that are out there and then um, where the parallelism comes in is that each of the bodies is essentially doing the same calculation and we're computing pairwise gravitational forces and that sort of thing. So um, let's go ahead and run this just to see what happens and you can see here that um, this is the this is supposed to be the universe here and you can see that each of these bodies, um, some, of some of which are very close to one another, are all moving and having their new positions being calculated continuously. Um, as you can see, this is a very zippy little application um, that also has a beautiful visualization component. So what's happening here is that the computation is actually running on the graphics card and then there is also a visualization component that is being run on the host. So this is another example of um, a new world in which we're living where you know, data needs to be transferred between this accelerator device and the host device. And therefore, you know, bandwidth is, a, is of the utmost importance based on what I had shown earlier. So I hope that we'll be able to uh, you know, take a look at some other um, applications of GPUs in the future, and um, stay tuned.